What's up guys, it's Yvonne. So in this video, I wanted to go over remarketing. So how we, we can set up that remarketing code onto your website and how we can actually create a remarketing audience so we can target the people that have already seen our website. So this is of course incredibly useful because sometimes people don't buy their first time they see your product. Sometimes it takes them two or three or four times to get acquainted with it. So this will allow you to target those people that didn't buy the first time and that may be interested in checking out your product again. So let's get right in. So here's the campaign. As you see, I'm using a different email uh, because once you set up remarketing, it kind of stays there. And I wanted to guide you through the process of how to do it. So that's why I had to use my other email. So I'm going to go into the first step is when you're on your account, uh, go to shared library and go to audiences here. And here's what's going to show up. Now, depending on what you want to do, if you want to target people who gave you already their email address, you can say create list here. If you want to target users of your app, if you want to target people who interact with your YouTube channel or visitors to your website, you can pick that here. For this video, I'm going to show you how to set up remarketing for your website visitors, okay? Because that's what we've been focusing on in all the previous videos I've been doing. So you click on set up remarketing. Uh, don't worry about that too much. I may make a video on dynamic ads later on where basically your title will change based on what people say. But for now, let's just say set up remarketing. So you need to put a tag first of all. So you could actually just get the email sent to you. You don't need to, you can just uncheck that and use the code here. Now, if you want the email sent to you, you can put it here and here. If you want someone else to read it as well, maybe yourself and your developer, and then put a note saying, Hey, this is for my AdWords remarketing list or whatever it is you want to do. Um, in the instruction, in the email, you will get clear instructions. So I'm going to assume we're not going to do that. And I'm just going to copy this tag, which is actually exactly what you will do when you get the email, same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tag and it says, put it right before the ending of the body tag. So put it in the body tag, basically. So what we're going to do is normally you would put this on every single web page you have. So if you have, you know, a landing page, a thank you page, a sales page, an upsell page, a downsell page, a special promotion page after that, you would just go into settings here and you would put it in the body tracking code. And what that will allow you to do is, well, that, that will allow Google to kind of see how many people visited every single part of your page. So then what we'll have to do after we do that is go in and customize it a little bit and say what part of our site uh, we want to track for the remarketing list specifically. So again, if, if you have multiple pages, just put it here. Uh, if you're using ClickFunnels, right, just put the code in there in the body tracking code. So I'll click save. And alternatively, if you only have one page, you know, you, you have this one sales page and then you're just taking them straight to the buy page. Maybe you don't really need to do that. So you can put it in here in the, in the footer. So if you don't have a uh, body tag exactly per se, and you only have header and footer, put it in the footer, put it here and just click save. Okay. So that's assuming you're not putting it in on every page. So you can click out of there. So now you have two. So I'm going to delete this other one because uh, we we're only using one page, but again, keep this on. If you have, you know, more than two pages that you want to track and you want to track results and you want to create remarketing lists for different people. Okay. So that's done. So now we can go back and we can say continue. And it says return to audience. So our list looks like it's it's done, it's working. Um, this AdWords tag, they say it takes uh, 20 up to 24 hours to have it up, but that is not the case. It usually, it could take much more than that. For me, in one of my other campaigns, uh, one of my other accounts, it took me about three days actually for it to show red. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you a tool that will allow you to verify whether your pixel or your code is set up properly. And that's the Google Chrome extension. It's tag assistant extension by Google. I will show you and I'll go into that in the next video. And that will also allow you to see whether your conversions as we did in one of the previous videos was set up properly. So I'll show you how to use that tool. But for now, assuming you do, you do that, 
If you only have one page, you're pretty much done. Now, if you want to create a more specific list, you would have to go to remarketing list here. So let's go over some of the options here. So again, we're going to say website visitors and we can create a name. So let's say remarketing list name. This one is diabetes landing page visitors, maybe. Right. And then you have a variety of options here. So you can include just visitors of a page. And then over here, you would input your URL. So let's go back into see what our URL is. I think that's the one. So you would maybe just put in this part, right? And you would put that in here. And you would say URL contains, right? You don't put in HTTPS or www, because if you say contains, as long as that part's in there, no matter what they type in, uh, they will be added to your remarketing list. So, so don't do that just to be safe. We don't know what people are going to type in. Just keep it at that. And yeah, so now basically, if you say that, it should, and if you click estimate list size, it's not going to give you anything yet. But basically, that's it. So once you click save, it will tell you how many people visited this page in particular. Okay. Now, the other options are you can say people who visited this page. So again, you would input that in. And you would say people who didn't visit a page. So maybe you want to target people who've never seen a particular category before. Maybe you're recommending diabetes. You want people who visited your page, but who never visited any competitors. So what you would do is you would put in the competitors URLs here, uh, right? Or maybe you want to target people who've seen competitors and you believe that variation is good and you want people, ex you only want to track people who've been exposed to other websites as well, not only yours. You would input that here. You would input yours and then you would input the other ones here, right? Um, let's see. Yeah, so you could do contains equals starts with. So it doesn't have to just contain that URL, even though I think that's the easiest. I would just use contain, but you can also like play around with it, say equals. So it has to be that exact URL or it starts with a certain URL, but I would just leave it at contains and just input your URL here. Okay, membership duration. This basically says, uh, I, I think the maximum is 540 days. Yeah, and the minimum is 30 days. And what this does is this basically says, how long the cookie will stay on. So in, in, in basic English language, um, how long the person will stay on the list after he visited whatever your rules are. So if we said here, visitors of a page, and we say 30 days, if a person goes to this site the first day, and he, he doesn't Assuming we create a remarketing targeted list and we target those people, assuming he doesn't trigger that ad for 30 days, if he types in something that will trigger that remarketing ad after the 30 day period, he will not be on it because the cookie will stay on his account or basically this will work for him for 30 days. Okay. Um, that's it. So anything over that, he will not show up in our remarketing list. So depending on, you know, maybe your product, if it's something like maybe a house where people don't normally buy or don't make such a quick decision as within 30 days, maybe you'd want to increase it, maybe like 180 or, you know, the maximum is 540. And that way they're saved on your remarketing list for that period of time, right? Now, the, the other thing is, you know, if it's 540 days, that's about a year and a half. So what are the chances of people buying within a year and a half and not being relevant to your remarketing list anymore? That's a decision for you to make because if you make it too much, they may not be relevant anymore. Okay. So that's, that's what that is. You add a description that's for you. So that's basically it. Once you do that, so let's just go back and make it visitors of a page contains, uh, I don't know, let's make it 75 days. Does not matter. And let's say the save. And now it should say here, membership status. We could close this and we could delete this, I believe. We sh yeah, we sh so we should be able to delete this. You cannot delete it. Uh, you cannot delete the first one, which is why I had to use a new account just to show you guys how to do this. And it's still updating. It's still working. Like I said, it. they say it's going to take up to 24 hours. For me, it took much longer than that. Uh, so don't worry. But in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can test it yourself. So while we do that, let me actually show you where you can um, add this remarketing list. So suppose you've, you've, you've added this remarketing list and now you have 3,000 people that, to whom you can remarket to. What do you do with that? Well, we're going to need to go back into audiences, just like in the previous video where we changed our demographics. 
and we need to say so instead of clicking demographics here we need to target remarketing we need to click targeting and you can add it to campaign or the ad group level you can't have both okay so pick only one if you add it to the ad group you'll have to remove it from the ad group to add it to the campaign let's say you know campaign one interest in remarketing and what categories so we said remarketing category not people that have already input their emails we said remarketing and you can add it so add the more specific one i think was this one right that's the one we changed which had the the um, cookie on there for 75 days and you can just add it here and so this part is important also before you click save everything on google uh, adwords everything you set in for keywords or for demographics is automatically put in at target and bid and what target and bid means is that if you have for example demographic range so in our previous video we've changed our demographics to you know males aged 18 to 24 and you have keywords what target and bid means is that both both of them must be active at the same time for the ad to trigger so you can't have a male aged 54 who types in your keyword you can't have the ad show to them because the default is target and bid for both of them if the default was bid only for the age group then you you may see clicks that are completely irrelevant because then you may see the demographic area or the region that you've selected so males aged 18 to 24 you may have those people just type anything in google and your ad will show you don't want that right that's why you set a target and bid target and bid basically means all the categories need to be included that's what it is so i would recommend putting in target and bid here for this what this would mean is that people have to be on your remarketing list and they have to type in the keywords that you've set um i guess they've, they've they've automatically put in some keywords here they have to type in those keywords and they have to be on our remarketing list for this ad to show to them which makes sense right because otherwise if you say bid oh and i guess it kind of deleted itself let me just quickly add it so you guys see so or this one delete that okay so uh, if we say bit only, what's going to happen is as long as they're on your remarketing list or as long as they type in your keywords, the ad will trigger. So if they're on your remarketing list, the people, and they type in flying monkeys, which is completely unrelated, your ad will still show. Can that be useful? Maybe. Maybe it's going to remind them that, hey, by the way, here was this great ad I saw. But it's also possible that they just weren't interested in your product enough to pursue it and to type in the keywords for it so it may be a wasted click maybe right again there's no definite yes or no in terms of advertising it's all about uh, optimizing and improving and possibly doing better so that's up to you to decide i would personally say target a bit just to play it safe but that's up to you if you want to kind of remind people regardless of what they type in the search term you could save it only so that's what that is uh, i'll click save and now your uh, marketing campaign should be here you can adjust it again just like we did in the previous video um, increase decrease you know whatever importance this has for you as opposed to your keywords you can change that so that's about it in the next video i'll show you how you can actually test this audience section here and regardless of what it says here we can test it right now and see if it works okay so if you guys have any questions or concerns please leave them down below um if you enjoyed the video please leave it a thumbs up please subscribe if you have already subscribed thank you i do appreciate it and i will see you guys in the next video